Merry Christmas! And we are here at the Red Brick Tap and Barrel where we have one of the co-owners, Brooke, who is gonna show us how to make a festive holiday drink for Christmas. What do you have for us here, Brooke? I have an oatmeal cookie white Russian. Okay, so what do we need to make this oatmeal cookie white Russian? Okay, so first we need um, some Kahlua, uh, vanilla, vodka, um, some oatmeal cookie creamer, uh, fresh cinnamon, and we're gonna top it with some oatmeal cookie pies. What? I have never had a drink topped with oatmeal cookie pies. This yes. sounds amazing. So did you come up with this recipe yourself? I did. Wow, that must have been a lot of taste testing <laughs> yeah. and a lot of fun. A uh, lot of fun. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it. All right. What do we need to do first? So, I'm gonna make two today so we can each sample it. Yay! So, we're gonna do our vanilla vodka. Ooh, vanilla vodka, guys. All right, and then we're gonna use our Kahlua. Okay, we got some Kahlua going in. Now, can viewers, if they don't have vanilla vodka, could you use just regular vodka? You could, but the vanilla vodka makes it just a little bit more warm and spicy. Oh, okay, so that's what's kind of giving this this Christmas kind of flavor. Correct. Ooh, and just a bit of that uh, oat creamer. Correct. She's shaking it up, guys. We're gonna give it a good Woo! shake. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. <laughs> All right. So that was quick and easy. It didn't oh, seem like yeah. it took too long. Seems like that's something like anyone could do, yes. any viewer could do, just make this drink. And I actually have homemade Kahlua at home, so that's what we use to make this at home. Homemade Kahlua. Yes. Wow, I'm, we might have to come back and see what, <laughs> what that's about. All right, we are going to now top this with some cinnamon. Ooh, we've got a cinnamon topper. Look at how beautiful. And we're gonna do... <gasps> Guys, it comes with an oatmeal cookie crumbs. Oh my gosh! So this is are. what the drink looks like. Whoa! <laughs> this is amazing. I don't think I've ever had a drink topped with an oatmeal <laughs> cookie. This is fabulous. This is Christmas. Let's say we give it a taste. All right, let's do it. To Christmas! Cheers to Christmas. <laughs> Mmm. Oh my <laughs> yes. gosh. So you know, good. It's so good. It gives you that warm bit of cinnamon, which makes it really Christmassy. And it's dairy free. Dairy, I wouldn't have guessed it because it's got that kind of creamy aspect to mm -hmm. it, but it's dairy free, so it's free for everyone to enjoy. Mm. Do you think we should bite the cookie? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us here, Brooke. Absolutely. Um, if you guys want to check out this recipe, we'll have it posted to a link on our website with all the ingredients. Cheers to Christmas. Cheers. Well, we're not done yet, guys. We're gonna move to the back of the house here at the Red Brick Tap and Barrel with Chef Kevin. He's one of the owners as well, and he's gonna teach us a little bit about turkey time and how to jazz up your Christmas dinner so that you're not eating the same exact meal that you had for Thanksgiving. back at it again. This time we're with the owner of the Red Brick Tap and Barrel. He's also one of the chefs here and he is going to show us how to make a turkey that's a little bit different from what we had over Thanksgiving. You know, so often we have a Thanksgiving meal and then we have Christmas a month later. It's the same meal. We're going to try to see what we can do to twist it up. It's turkey time. That's right. Yeah. So that's a uh... One of the things we like to do here at the Red Brick um, is take something that you know or you've had before uh, and give you something that you've never had before. That sounds amazing. So we'll take a, a turkey, uh, like you said, was just Thanksgiving. We'll make it a little bit different for Christmas so you're not having the same thing. Okay. Sounds
Sounds good. Let's get into it. So what do we have here to revamp our holiday dinner? All right, so what I like to do with uh, a whole turkey or a whole chicken is uh, I make a brine. It's called a brine. So a little bit different than a marinade. A marinade is more to cover it up with flavor, and a brine is to inject the, the bird, as we have here today, uh, inject the bird with flavor and moisture so we're not going to overcook it and dry it out. Okay. So we'll start here. Um, I have it sitting in the roaster ready to go. I also like to use an electric roaster. It saves room in the oven. It's also easy and safe as well. Um, so here is our raw turkey. So the difference is a brine is going to infuse flavor into the bird Correct, versus yeah. kind of masking the flavor with, you know, a coating of a marinade. Sure, yep, exactly, yeah, and add a lot of moisture to it as well. So um, I already took the bird out of the package. Um, you'll find in the middle, usually they tuck, this is the neck, doesn't mean it's a boy. <laughs> um, and then they'll hide the gizzards or the heart maybe under the skin here, yep. And so then what we're gonna do with this neck and the, and the gizzards is we're gonna make our gravy, uh -oh. our stock for our gravy out of it. Okay. And so I'm gonna set that in a pan just out of the way. And then I got a big bucket here. If you don't have a bucket, the roaster would work too. You want as much of the moisture out of the bird as possible, all the ice and stuff that they pack it with, uh, you wanna get rid of that. Okay. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna try to fit it into this bucket here. Now about, what size turkey is this? That was a about 25 pound turkey. Uh, rule of thumb, about a pound of bone-in meat per person, uh, but this would feed at least 30 people. Okay. So you can get 30 portions out of that. Set this roaster to the side. All right, and then our brine, so what we're gonna do is a orange and cranberry turkey. Wow. So a little bit more um, Christmas flavors to it. So I got cranberry juice. Okay, so this is your making the brine. Yep, making the brine. And we're gonna sit the turkey in the brine overnight. Okay. Also have the turkey in the fridge for about a week. Um, it takes about a week to thaw out the turkey uh, properly under refrigeration, okay. uh, about a week. Uh, so that is cranberry juice, orange juice, and then we have chicken stock here. What I love about this is it seems like these are items that a lot of people may have in their house. It's not something like so unusual that you Correct. have to go to a specialty market. Correct, yes. Uh, a couple cinnamon sticks in there. I got some salt and pepper just because. Okay. Just because. We'll throw some chopped garlic in there. And maybe some fresh cranberries as well. Ooh. Just to let it sit. That's and Green's so, holiday. Right. So what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna cover this up and then we're gonna put it in the fridge overnight. Okay. And then in the morning, we'll put it in the roaster. Okay. So after we put this in the fridge, what happens next? All right, so the following day, uh, after about 24 hours of brining, we will take it out of the brine, out of the liquid, uh, dry off most of it, put it in our roaster, and uh, then we'll season it up. Okay, let's see how you do that. All right, so this bird sat in the fridge overnight. Um, so we're gonna take it out of its brine. Okay. Carefully and try not to make a mess. Ooh, that's a see big all that, turkey. All that liquid, try to drain off all that liquid. Okay. All right. Wow. So then this we'll have to discard. And a few things I like to do with my bird. Um, again, we, we did the brine, so hopefully it doesn't dry out. But to ensure that, I'm gonna do a little compound butter. Ooh. So I have a little soft, uh, soft butter here. And then I got some fresh herbs. Oh wow. Th thyme, rosemary. And that thyme and rosemary really pairs well with the cranberry and the orange. Um, Gives a lot of extra flavor. Salt and pepper, some fresh garlic here. Oh, wow. So then what we're gonna do. Compound butter, this is like what you see at those fancy restaurants, guys. <laughs> sure. I did not know you. So any, all of us could be at home making compound butter? Just like that, yep. Wow. Just so, soften the butter and add whatever flavor you want to it. You can even do a, 
Uh, take some orange marmalade and add that to the butter. Um, give them cranberry, blue cheese. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the, the meat itself has flavor. So we're gonna take this butter, okay. we're gonna put it up under the skin. Oh, right, so you're right, at, right on top the skin of the yep, bit. right okay. on top of the meat. Yep, because the skin usually has flavor. We want to make sure that meat has flavor too. Okay. The butter will will help moisten it as well. A lot of flavor from the herbs. Mm. And then we'll take the rest of it. This bird is getting the royal it. treatment. Right, all <laughs> over it. Okay. So you just kind of massage that all over the bird. Then what else we'll do? So we'll take this orange marmalade here. Ooh. A couple of scoops of orange marmalade right on top. Okay. Some more fresh herbs. Oh wow, it's starting to look garlic. good. <laughs> salt and pepper. Wow. I love how liberal you are with the salt and pepper. Salt, salt and pepper, you want to make sure that that skin has a nice crust on it. Okay. Then we'll massage that as well. So is that one of the dirty. keys? I hear people, they like a crisp crust, but yet they want the bird to be juicy. It's sure. a paradox of yeah, sorts. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of tricky. Um, but I like to do a, a low and slow on the, on the turkey as well. Okay. So. All right, and then we got some fresh cranberries. Ooh. Sprinkle some fresh cranberries wow. over it. We're not done yet. Fresh no. cranberries, yes. And then I always have cuties at home because I, <laughs> I have four kids. We eat a lot of cuties. <laughs> I love cuties too. <laughs> so we'll squeeze some of those over it and just plop it right in there. Okay. Oh, so you can just put the cuties right on oh, in yeah. after you squeeze. You don't have to oh, discard yeah. them. Leave them in there for that flavor. Yep. And then what else we're gonna do, this is called mirepoix. This is celery, carrots, and onions. And this will add a lot of aromatic flavors to it. Mirepoix, celery, mirepoix, carrot, yeah. and onion. Yeah, Who knew base, that that had a name? Celery, carrot, and onion mixture is based mirepoix. Most, most French dishes, stews, soups, roasts, always have celery, carrot, onion in it. Okay. What else, we got some cinnamon sticks. Make sure we go in the bird, around the bird. And then it looks like it could use some more salt and pepper. Whoa, yes. Loading up on flavor, guys. All right, so then what all this is gonna do is gonna create an au jus in the bottom of the pan. All the oranges and the cinnamon, the cranberries, the mirepoix, it's all gonna create an au jus. And from that, we're gonna make our gravy and our stuffing from that. Now, for those of us who don't know and are completely inept at cooking, what is an au jus? Au jus is meat, is the juice from the meat. Ah! Okay. So it all, all natural and lots of flavor. Okay, all natural, lots of flavor, and it's the juice from the meat that you've got going on here yep. with the celery, the carrot, the onion, the marmalade, the everything. Yep, all that's gonna create an awesome au jus. Okay. A lot of flavor. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna lid that up. We're gonna throw it in our roaster. Okay. So we don't have to have an oven, we can no, roast it. Save, save room in the oven for everything else you got going on. Okay. So I like to do 300 degrees, um, and it's about 15 minutes per pound okay. of meat. So how many so hours are we looking at? We're for looking this bird? at about three and a half, four hours. Three and a half, four hours to get this bird from raw to 165 to, degrees. To 165 yeah, degrees. So that's an important note. That's what the bird correct. should be temped at, 165. Yep, yep, all poultry should be cooked to 165 degrees. Okay. So Kevin, earlier today, I noticed that you set this aside. This is the heart, liver, neck. What are we gonna do with that? So from there, we're gonna make our turkey stock to add to our gravy. Okay. So I have the, the neck, as you said, and the gizzards. Um, we're gonna add more of that mirepoix that I explained. Okay. Onion, celery, carrot. We're gonna cover this with water and we're gonna put it on a low heat just to simmer for a couple hours while our turkey cooks. Oh, so this simmers for a couple hours along with the turkey. Yep. Okay. Yep. More, Let's do more it. time you give it, the more flavor you get. Okay. So now here, uh, we've got some side dishes coming up, right? Sure, yep, yep. And broccoli is one of my favorite things to eat of all time. 
So, and our favorite way to do it is grilled or roasted. So this is a very quick, easy side dish uh, that me and my kids like to eat. So we have some chopped broccoli here, nice big florets, olive oil, generous olive oil. Ooh, okay. Fresh garlic. Oh, I get the feeling this isn't my mother's broccoli. Sorry, uh, mom. <laughs> she boiled it and it was kind of soggy. <laughs> sure, sure. We want we want al dente. We want a nice crunch on our broccoli. All right, so we'll toss that around. Uh, she might little... see this and crucify me later. She's gonna be angry. <laughs> so we got Ooh. all that is salt, pepper, fresh garlic, olive oil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the broil setting okay. on our oven. Okay. And just for a couple minutes, just to get a nice char on it. And then we're gonna top it with some blue cheese. Wow, so it doesn't have to cook long. What would nope. you say, just a few? That was, it's gonna be about three, four minutes. And do we you just, need to turn need them a, or anything or? Nope, just need a nice, nice char to give it nice flavor on it. Uh, and then we'll top it with that blue cheese. All right, so we put this stock, you put this stock on the oven. So now what are we doing here? Okay, so while our turkey was roasting, uh, we made our turkey stock, uh, the neck and the gizzards and the mirepoix. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that au jus that I explained in the bottom of this pan, finish our gravy with it, and then also make our stuffing. Wow, it. so you're gonna teach us how to make a stuffing. Yes, okay, this is amazing. So we got broccoli going, we got turkey, and now stuffing's on the way. What do we do next, All sir? All right, so what we got is our beautiful turkey. Yes. And we'll take a ladle. All this au jus down in the bottom here. Oh, wow. We'll go right into our stock. Look at all that flavor. Right, all, all natural flavor, just right from the bird. And the, the rosemary, fresh herbs, the cranberry, the orange, the orange marmalade. The butter also seeped into it. Wow. Oh, right, I forgot we put that compound butter That's that right. you made. Oh. All so right. all of that flavor is in here it's now. Right in here, yep. All the all the veggies, the cranberries, throw it into your gravy. Just do it. So from here, we're gonna bring this back to a boil. Okay. And then we're gonna add cornstarch to it to thicken it up. Okay. And maybe a little salt and pepper, we'll taste it and see what it's like. All right. So then also our stuffing. This is um, just some some stale bread that we cubed up, uh, let overnight to dry out. That way the dry bread will absorb more um, liquid from our bird here. So what's interesting about this, this is not something that you have to go out and buy. You can literally use the bread. Are you saying we can literally use the kind of bread that's a little stale at home? Sure, yeah. Wow, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when I was a kid, we used to save the, uh, the, the butts from the bread, and this is how we would make our stuffing with it. Mm, okay. So then we'll take, again, this au jus down here. Ooh. And I just have bread, bread and butter in there right now. Wow, he's ladling the au jus on the bread. Did I say that right? Are you ladling? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there's also, we got all the mirepoix on the bottom here, the cranberries. Ooh. It's, it's smelling like Christmas, guys. It's smelling like Christmas. All right. So that bread is absorbing all this flavor from inside here. Then what we'll do, is we'll take a little bit of this fresh thyme, okay. sprinkle this fresh thyme over. And you know what, I have a question. I yep. always wonder about um, thyme. Sometimes I'm lazy and I don't do that. Does anything happen if we put the stems no, in? No, a little bit of stem is fine. Okay. Um, it may get stuck in your teeth, that's all. Okay, I but always is, wondered about it that. It is all full of flavor. And what you can do with these stems afterwards, you can throw them into your stock and then also flavor your stock as okay. well. So fresh rosemary. Some salt and pepper. Ooh. And we'll throw that into the oven 15, 20 minutes just to get it nice and crisp. Okay, and, and do, do we have to turn it or anything? Nope, just like that. Oh, this is so easy. This is like literally anyone can do this. I think sometimes people are so intimidated by right. creating a holiday dinner, but here you've made it yeah. easy, you've yeah, made it no, something fun. No, no need to stress. Food shouldn't be serious, it should be fun. Yeah. And you're using ingredients that a lot of us have at home already. Correct. All right. All, All right. right. So I'll throw this in the oven and we'll finish our gravy. Okay, so we have our broccoli. What is this, a roaster, the broiler? Yep, this is our broiler that we uh, that we use 
uh, roast all of our veggies up here and salmon and whatnot. So here's our broccoli. As I said, we just wanted that nice, that nice char color on it. Okay. Adds so much flavor to broccoli, but we're gonna just bump it up a notch. This is a Danish blue cheese. You've got gonna... to be kidding me, I love blue cheese. Oh yeah, this blue cheese is awesome. Super creamy, sharp. We're gonna throw it back up into the broiler here for maybe about 30 seconds a minute. So it's going back in. Yeah, just to give that, cheese. just to melt that blue cheese a little bit more. Okay. So our gravy here, so our stock is now boiling. So we're gonna add a cornstarch slurry to it. This is just equal parts water and cornstarch, okay. and this will thicken our gravy. Oh, wow. So we bring that to a boil, and Ooh. that'll get nice and thick. And then to go one, one step further, I have a balsamic glaze here. A little acid added to the, the sweet sharpness of the blue cheese. Our approach here is, um, it's a casual approach to upscale dining. So we take things that you know, you understand, you can read the menu and know that what you're gonna get is really good and something that you can understand, uh, but then again, give you something that hopefully you've never had before. Well, this is absolutely delicious. The turkey is succulent. It's a great holiday meal. I wanna thank you, Kevin and Brooke, for allowing me into your restaurant to teach our viewers how to make a meal. And in the spirit of Christmas, the turkey will be donated to our local soup kitchen. Here in Alpena, Jatine Tinsley, WBKB News.